So in this lesson, we're going to talk about similarity that we can find within a single right triangle. So the theme of this unit is going to be mostly on right triangles and then going into trigonometry, um, which we'll talk about in our next lesson. But um, first, we want to talk about what kind of similar triangles we can create out of a single right triangle. So we have just a couple of theorems, uh, or actually just one theorem, and then the idea of this geometric mean that we're going to talk about today to help us find missing lengths on the triangle. But first, um, a couple things to remember, some vocabulary. Um, anytime you have a right triangle, remember the longest side is what we call the hypotenuse. So if you look at this entire triangle ABC as one single right triangle, the hypotenuse is that longest side AB. And then we can create an altitude, which is basically the height um, to, from any corner, from any vertex of your triangle to one of the sides, as long as it makes a right angle. So here we strategically created a, um, an altitude from C to D. So you can see how it makes a right angle and it goes through that vertex C. So this is an altitude. of triangle ABC. Now we can of course look at an altitude BC, which is perpendicular to AC, um, but here we want to specifically look at the altitude to the hypotenuse because what this does is this is going to create similar right triangles. So let me go ahead and write down the theorem for you. So this first theorem, or the only theorem we're talking about today, says that the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, so that, like I was saying earlier, specifically goes from that right angle C to um, that hypotenuse AB, and it creates a right angle there at, ang at angle ADC. So anyway, the altitude of the hypotenuse of a right triangle forms two right triangles that are similar to each other and also similar to the original triangle. So what this does is it's really cool. It creates three similar shapes. So what you can do is you can go ahead and redraw this if it helps you visualize it, but we have that original right triangle ABC And then we create two smaller right triangles. And here order really matters because we want to write the corresponding points in the same position. So I'm just gonna draw two more right triangles because I know I'm gonna create two right triangles. And then what you wanna do is be careful with how you label it. So if I look at this kind of middle sized right triangle, we can see the right angle here is at D. So I wanna make sure I put D there at that right angle. And then the longer leg goes from D to A, the shorter leg goes from D to C. So there's that second right triangle, triangle ACD, that corresponds to triangle ABC, right? And that smallest little right triangle there in the kind of left corner, um, the right angle is once again at D, and the longer side goes from D to C. So I wanna make sure I put C out here, and then go up to B as that shorter side. So order really does matter because you want to make sure you try to write the corresponding letters in the same position. So if I want to write one big similarity statement, I can say this is triangle ABC, which is similar to triangle, and I went from kind of counterclockwise from that lower right-hand corner, so ABC. So the next one's going to go triangle ACD. And this third one, again, going in the same order, we're going to start with letter C, go to B, and go to D. So order really does matter. because we want to try to always write things in the corresponding correct order, okay? So once we realize we have three right triangles that are all similar to each other, we'll get to the corollaries, which will help us figure out um, how to find missing lengths. Now, before we get to these geometric mean corollaries, we first wanna talk about, well, what is this idea of a geometric mean? Well, the geometric mean is basically an nth root of the product of n positive numbers. And when we talk about nth root, one nth root you guys are really familiar with is the square root. Because we can know, the, we can say, okay, the square root of four is two because it's two times two. We have two of the same number, two and two, and they multiply to four. So if we go backwards, the square root of four is two. So that's a square root. We can of course do something like the third root, the fourth root, the fifth root um, for the same idea. So I'll just write here this on the side. So for example, if you're looking at the third root of eight, this is an nth root. Then you're asking yourself, what's the same number that we multiplied by itself three times to get eight? Well, that's two, right? You can do like the fourth root of 81. You're asking yourself, what's the same number multiplied by itself uh, four times to get 81? Well, that's three, right? So here we can see two to the third equals eight, three to the fourth equals 81. That's the idea of an nth root. So let me kind of erase that. So the geometric mean then is again the nth root of the product of n positive numbers. So let me go ahead and write that down and we'll look at an example. Okay, 
So for example, what does this mean? So if we're looking for the geometric mean of, let's say, 4 and 25, what we're doing is we're doing a product, which means we're going to multiply. And then we want to take the nth root of n positive numbers. And don't let that be kind of tricky to you. We just want to ask ourselves, how many numbers are we multiplying together? Two. So then what I'm doing is I'm doing the square root because I only have two numbers. So I'm going to multiply 4 and 25 and take the square root of that. So this is the square root of 100, which is 10. We don't need a plus or minus here because we're not solving for x. We're just looking at the square root of the positive 4 times 25, which will give us positive 10, that principal root. Now, it doesn't have to just be two numbers. It could be three. So we can say, what's the geometric mean of 4, 25, and 15? Then you multiply all three together. It doesn't always have to be a nice, pretty integer. You can end up with something like, you know, 4 times the third root of 6 as your answer, and that's fine, right? You just simplify that. The good news is for us, we're not going to go beyond the square root with these geometric means, okay? So this is the geometric mean. Um, then we have these geometric mean corollaries, which will help us find missing lengths on this big right triangle, which remember we can use that altitude to divide it up into two other smaller similar right triangles. So. First things first, let's make sure we see what the um, lengths here on the triangle represent, and then we'll talk about the geometric mean corollaries. So this h is that altitude to the hypotenuse, okay? So we don't want to forget that. That's your altitude to the hypotenuse. And then if you look at this overall big triangle side lengths a, b, and c, we broke down C into two smaller components because it's also these two individual pieces, X and Y. So don't forget C is equal to X plus Y, okay? And then A and B are basically what we're going to call legs, and X and Y are segments of the hypotenuse, okay? So our first corollary will help us look at the relationship between the altitude of the hypotenuse, the altitude to the hypotenuse, and the... Um, segments of that hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and write this down. And we'll talk about what this means. All right, so it says the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse, which remembers what I had highlighted here in red, that length is the geometric mean of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. So what do we mean by segments of the hypotenuse? Well, the segments of the hypotenuse, remember, are these pieces, the x and the y. So there's two different pieces which create the segments of the hypotenuse, which I have highlighted here in orange and in pink. That word, ge the phrase geometric mean tells us the actual calculation. So remember the geometric mean is the nth root of the product of these numbers. So we're going to multiply two numbers together. We're doing the geometric mean of x and y. So basically, h is equal to the square root of x times y. Because we're multiplying two numbers together, x and y, those are the segments of the hypotenuse, so we're doing the square root, and that equals the altitude. Now, alternatively, if you want to write this as h squared equals x, y, you can too. It doesn't matter. Um, they mean the same thing to me. Sometimes it's easier to do the square root right away. Sometimes it's easier to have it as a square. It's up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, so that's the first corollary, which gives us the first relationship. Then the second corollary allows us now to talk about A and B, those legs that we haven't worked with yet. So those legs also have a relationship to the segments of the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse itself. So in these right triangles, the length of a leg of a right triangle, which could be A or B, it doesn't matter, they're both legs, okay, is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that same leg. So let's break this down and look at one leg um, at a time and you can kind of see this relationship. So, if we take a look at the leg, let's say A, all right, so I'm putting A here in purple. So, this leg A is, oops, let me highlight, underline that. Um, this leg A is a geometric mean of the lengths of the hypotenuse. So remember, the hypotenuse is this entire length C, or X plus Y, whichever way you want to write it and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. So then you want to think, okay, what is actually touching A? 
that's on the hypotenuse. Well, that is this little bit of the sec of um, the hypotenuse, this x. So you guys see that? A is equal to the geometric mean of C and X. X is the segment of the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is broken up into X and Y. So we're going to pick the one that's actually touching A, which is X, and multiply it to the hypotenuse C. So what we're saying here is A is equal to the square root of C times X. And again, if you want to rewrite C as X plus Y, go for it. You can say A is equal to the square root of X plus Y times X, and then you can FOIL that. And like I said before, feel free to rewrite this as a squared equals CX, and that's fine too. Now, the same thing is true for the other leg, B. So B is equal to the geometric mean of whatever the hypotenuse is here, which is C, times the part of the hypotenuse closest to B, which is Y. So it's the same relationship, but using the other part of the hypotenuse. We can also write B squared equals CY, or if you want to rewrite C as X plus Y, b is equal to the square root of x plus y in parentheses times y, okay? So those are the relationships we get from this right triangle, and this works because um, all three of those triangles, right, are similar, so we can create these geometric mean corollaries. So we just have one example today, which is just finding x, y, and z using those formulas. Now what I like to do is because every problem is oriented differently and I actually have memorized this diagram, I relabel everything based on the diagram in my notes. If you don't want to do that, no worries. It's kind of up to you in your style. So I'm just going to go ahead and reorder this or relabel it based on the x, y, um, c, a, b, and h that I have in my notes. Okay, so once I have that, I'm just going to go back to my notes and look at my equations, and you can use whichever format you'd like. I prefer the square roots. So remember, h is equal to the square root of x times y, a is the square root of c times x, b is the square root of c times y, and I'm just going to plug everything in based on what I see in my diagram. And if it makes it a little easier for you, you can write down to the side what everything is equal. So what I'm saying here is, let me just scroll down a bit, um, based on my diagram, c is x plus 9, y equals 9, x is still x, um, oh, and I erased one of these, this would be a, a is equal to y, b is equal to z, and h is equal to 6. So I'm going to basically just plug in these values for c, y, x, a, b, and h. Okay, so now we see h is 6, x is still x, y is 9, a is y, C is x plus 9, make sure you have that in parentheses, and x is x. B is z, c is once again x plus 9, and y is 9. Now we all know to solve an equation, to actually get a single number answer, we can only have one variable. So if you look at those three equations, there's only one place to start, and that's here by solving for x. And once we get x, we can figure out y and z. So Remember, to get rid of the square root, what we're going to do, and I'm just going to rewrite this as 9x, is we can square both sides, right? Because a square cancels a square root, just like how a square root cancels out a square. So 36 is equal to 9x, x is equal to 4. Awesome. Then, once I know x is 4, let's go ahead and plug it in. So we're going to get the square root of 4 plus 9 times 4. Remember your PEMDAS. 13 times 4 goes inside the square root. 13 times 4 is 52, and it's okay if you don't get a perfect square, just simplify that. So you can do your factor tree if you'd like, you can do um, perfect square factors, whatever works for you. You might even realize, hey, if I look at this line above, I can do the square root of 4, and then the times the square root of 13, which gives me 2 square root 13, which is a quick way of simplifying that radical, but we do want to be in the habit of simplifying our radicals. Um, I would encourage you guys to practice that without a calculator because even though um, I can't see you right now, but it is important for you guys to do it without a calculator. Um, when you're going ahead to Algebra 2, there are times where you might need to do this without a calculator. So just a reminder to practice. Okay, and then we can solve for z in the same way, plugging in 4 for x. We'll once again get 13 times 9. And I might just simplify here because I can do the square root of 9 really easily. So we'll get 3 square root 13. And there's x, y, z. So that, in a nutshell, is working with similarity in our right triangles and working with geometric mean. So please let me know if you have any questions.